Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 20, verses 13 to 38. We're going to be reading about Paul's farewell and also a very mysterious saying of Jesus here. Verse 13, But we, going ahead to the ship, set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul aboard there, for he had so arranged, intending himself to go by land. When he met us at Assos, we took him aboard and came to Mytilene. Sailing from there, we came the following day opposite Chios. The next day, we touched at Samos and stayed at Tragilium. And the day after, we came to Miletus, for Paul had determined to sail past Ephesus that he might not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hastening, he was hurrying, if it were possible for him to be in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called to himself the elders of the assembly. When they had come to him, he said to them, You yourselves know... From the first day that I set foot in Asia, how I was with you all the time, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears, and with trials which happened to me by the plot of the Jews, how I didn't shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, teaching you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus. It's very important to understand here that Paul mentioned number one, first priority, repentance toward God. And many times, in many circles today, we have fallen from that. Now it's just bogged down with these messages of how much God loves you and and how much Jesus loves you and how good God is and how he wants to bless you. But not too much do you hear about repentance toward God. Verse 22, Now, behold, I go bound by the Spirit to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions wait for me. Can you imagine going from place to place, preaching the gospel? And what does God say to you? Again, it's not this this comforting, you know, kind of, you know, pat on the back kind of prophecies that we get today. Oh, God loves you. and God wants to bless you. Oh, you're going to get a new car. And oh, God is going to, you know, cause you to smile a little bit more and, you know, and all this kind of crazy stuff. Okay. It's like the spirit of God whispers to him everywhere he goes. By the way, Paul, listen, bonds, jail, afflictions, pain waits you ahead. But these things don't count, nor do I hold my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to fully testify to the good news of the grace of God. Notice here, God spoke to him. The the Spirit of God testifies to him everywhere you go. Hey, Paul, just want to let you know, ahead, the road ahead, you're going to go to jail, you're going to be put in bonds, and you're going to be afflicted. Paul says these things don't count. Far cry from these pitiful people we got today just crying about, Oh, I need a safe space from the... I, you can't even say anything against me because I need a safe space from it. These people... I mean, Paul here faced prison, beatings, stonings, afflictions. And what does Paul say? Ah, these things don't count. I'm not even counting them because I got something to do in the Lord. I got a work to do in the Lord. You don't see Paul wandering around like a little baby crying for a safe space. Verse 24 again, but these things don't count nor do I hold my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to fully testify to the good news of the grace of God. Now, behold, I know that you all, among whom I went about preaching God's kingdom, will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you today that I am clean from the blood of all men, Why did Paul say that? Why did he say, okay, you're not going to see me no more, but I'm clean from the blood of all men. In other words, if there's any of you that decide to sin and your souls will be condemned to everlasting torment, your blood is off my hands. Okay, in other words, I'm not responsible for your sin because I've already preached righteousness. I've already preached 
the ways of God to you. And if you turn away from God, if you turn away from the righteousness of God, if you turn away from humility, walking with God in humility and serving Him with great humility, then I'm not responsible. Your blood is off my hands. For I didn't shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Very important. Whole counsel of God. A lot of people today talk about the love of God, but they don't talk about the fear of God. They talk about Jesus, but they don't talk about who Jesus is. The Torah, the law of God personified. If you want to talk about Jesus, talk about living like Jesus lived. There are some people that say, oh, no, you can't live perfect according to the law of God. There's no way you can live perfect according to the law of God. Um, excuse me, are you lying or is God lying? Because in Deuteronomy chapter 30, after he gave all of the Torah, after he gave the commandments, God said very specifically, all that I commanded you is not too hard for you. It's not too hard for you. You don't have to climb up to heaven to get it. You don't have to dig down to the, to the middle of the earth to get it. What I've told you, my laws, my ways, my tr precepts, they are easy. They are easy. You know, the Jews tell us there are 613 commandments. And you know, of course, not all of them apply to us. Only a fraction of that applies to the common man. A lot of them apply to priests only, or men only, or women only, or children only, or strangers only. Of the 613 commandments, there's only a fraction of them that actually apply to you. But yet most Christians today claim to be law-abiding citizens of the land they're in, well, let's say, for example, if you're in the United States, I have heard that there are so many laws in the United States that even lawyers don't even know how many laws there are. They cannot count. They estimate at least four million, four million. And you claim to be a law abiding citizen according to the law of the land. You claim to be a law abiding citizen. And yet you say that you can't just obey a few of God's commands. God said it's easy for you to obey. God is not a tyrant. God is not an unreasonable tyrant to command you to do something that he knows you cannot do. God is not so unreasonable. In the fact that you say that you cannot live in line with God's law, you are basically calling God a tyrant that basically gives out commands to a people that he knows cannot Obey them. The God of Moshe is the God of Yeshua. God is the same God. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. So it's very important to preach the whole counsel of God. Everything. Everything from beginning to end. Verse 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the assembly of the Lord and God which he purchased with his own blood. The TR manuscripts and the NU manuscripts omit the Lord and. Verse 29, For I know that after my departure, vicious wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Men will arise from among your own selves, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore watch, remembering that for a period of three years I didn't cease to admonish everyone night and day with tears. Can you imagine having a pastor that continues to admonish the flock night and day with tears? Now, brothers, I entrust you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver, gold, or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands served my necessities and those who were with me. In all things I give you an example, that so laboring you ought to help the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, quote, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Unquote. Here is the mysterious saying of Jesus. Because there is no place, as much as you just automatically assume that it's true and right and sounds good and sounds like Jesus. There is no place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John that records Jesus actually saying, quote, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Although that sounds right, 
there is no record of Jesus actually saying that phrase. Do you realize that? There is no record of it. Now, perhaps we might find it in the so-called New Testament Apocrypha. So this is a mysterious phrase. This is a mysterious thing. Why would Paul put that in there? First of all, as far as we know of, Paul never really heard Yeshua speak, you know, directly. He heard through the apostles. He heard through the disciples. He never even saw Jesus as far as we know of. Possibly did, but as far as we know of, he never even saw him. Okay? So how does Paul know that Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive? That is very mysterious. Verse 36, when he had spoken these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all because of the word which he had spoken, that they should see his face no more. Then they accompanied him to the ship. What a wonderful and very loving farewell. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.